guys know how you know you have an awesome person on your channel, awesome guest, <laughs> Anthony, is when you're just shooting the shit behind the scenes and then somebody goes, hey, Eric, the show was supposed to start two minutes ago. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know you got somebody special. Thank now, you, buddy. Most of you guys all know Carson Anthony from and uh, Unidentified S4. But, you know, I know he's uh, a show, lately he's been showing me pictures of drawings of abductions and all that. And I don't think I ever really got in deep in a way with the conversation with uh, Anthony about his abduction. And I thought that would be perfect for show. Just kind of get deep. I know a lot of you might already know the story, but maybe some of you don't know his story about uh, feeling abduction. So let's pretend everybody, I always like to do this. I always like to pretend we all don't know anything. You know, this is the first time we're ever meeting him. So we can hear the story from the beginning up. So, so we're, gonna, we're just going to start right away. We're just going to start right away. So, so Anthony, growing up, I don't know how long you've been technically into UFOs or what got you into UFOs. You know, was it like the abduction? Did you see things? So let's just start out. Were you a believer growing up as a teenager in UFOs? Or maybe you might, might have been, but you just didn't care to look into it when you're a teenager. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had an experience when I was 13. So prior prior to that, it was just basically whatever you've seen in comic books or on TV or whatever. No real big interest like I thought something was out there or anything like that. Uh, until I was, uh, till 1993 when I was 13. That's pretty much when my whole life changed. Uh, I was uh, dirt bike riding. I was an avid dirt bike rider, junior motocross and all of that. And uh, we used to go riding across the street from my house in the woods. And we would meet up every Saturday with like 30 of us and go riding. And uh, this one weekend we were out and I was riding for a couple hours. And I decided to go off on my own on the, the trails. And my bike was starting to run out of gas. So I had pulled over. Uh, to, to fuel up and get a bottle of water. And uh, I remember taking my backpack off and drinking water and just, you know, guzzling water and looking up. And I seen a black triangle craft, you know, floating through the woods, uh, coming into the wooded area. And I had no clue what the hell I was looking at. It was going really slow. And uh, I just kept staring at this thing. And it just kept coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. And finally, it stopped when it was about maybe about a football field away from me. And it just sat there. And I was just staring at this thing, trying to figure out what it was. You know, at 13 years old, they always say a lot of thoughts go through your mind. Is it a stealth bomber? Does a stealth bomber hover? Things like that you're saying in your head. And you're trying to make sense. Probably of military. It, yeah, probably military. Trying to make sense of what you're seeing. And then all of a sudden, I saw that object start to grow in size this way. And what it was was a second triangular craft on top of it. And it came off to the side and they sat side by side like that. And they slowly danced around each other. And I'm staring at this thing and totally in shock. Uh, Ron from Cosmic Neighbors actually made me a model, how I described what it looked like. And um, these things are dancing around each other. And all of a sudden, uh, the two of them merge back and they start going back up. And they shoot straight up in the sky until I can't see them anymore. And once they were pretty much gone out of sight, like little dots in the sky, I heard my parents screaming for me. And um, I, I couldn't make out where they were coming from, but I could hear my mother screaming on top of her lungs. And then finally I screamed back that I'm over here. And then my dad was whistling and I kept screaming, I'm over here. And finally, they got to my point. My parents were like, we're screaming for you for hours. You were supposed to be home hours ago. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And it was almost 6 o'clock in the evening. So you lost time at the same time. I lost about five hours of missing time. Now, did you notice uh, uh, before that happened, I don't know, was there anything different in the skies? I don't know. Was I'll it raining or anything? No, it was a beautiful, sunny, oh, just a normal day. day. Yeah, be perfect day. And uh, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, when those crafts were over, there was no sound anywhere. I didn't hear no birds, no cars passing from the street. We had a road that was out maybe about a quarter of a mile out. 
to my right hand side, there was the street. Uh, a lot of traffic will go down that main road. I don't remember hearing any cars, any birds, any other people dirt bike riding, nothing. And the, mo I, the I, more I've been telling the story over the years, the more little tidbits you start to remember. I hate to ask this, but you know, I'm going to ask it because you get this part out of the way. At 13, you weren't doing like any drinking or smoking weed, anything no. really clean. Okay, just want to make sure. I want everybody to know that. So you were completely clean. No, so so nobody could say, well, he might have been on something. He's a teenager, so you moved that out no. of the way. So that's gone. No. So it was a perfect clear. I'm always trying to look for patterns of other my, people. My, my, my sister and I lived like a very sheltered life. Uh, we, were, we were brought up, you know, the right way. We both went to Catholic school. We were both, I was an altar boy. You know, even from a, a little kid, I wanted to be a cop. So I always had that, that you know, clean cut Catholic school boy attitude. You know what I mean? You're <laughs> no, I, 13, if you look, we grew up, we grew up in a rundown apartment complex hooked up to an auction. That doesn't make you a bad guy. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just, you know, you know, life is was not, you know, living outside of Fresno, the, the mom left and I was a baby. So there is, there is a lot of things, but, but it's kind of cool how we get here. Right. So, right. so before that incident, everything was, you know, normal as hell nothing strange nothing no nothing really out of the ordinary you know one of the things that i've learned from uh, uh, uh another person was telling me about when they saw a bigfoot how they were living with it for so long and they were afraid to talk about it until the moment they did talk about it made them feel better so after that incident i mean did you feel like that where you had a story or, you, or you're, you, you just wanted to talk to somebody and you felt like you couldn't or nobody would believe you? Well, I tried the, right after it happened and I got home, we were walking back to my house, my family and I, and I was trying to explain to my dad about seeing the stealth bomber hover. And he was so pissed that I was gone for all those hours and they couldn't find me. I mean, I remember getting smacked up the back of my head like, you should have been home hours ago. You give your mother a heart attack and all this stuff. And I was trying to explain what I seen, but they, they weren't having it. it. It wasn't until like 1997 uh, when the Phoenix Lights incident happened and I heard about black triangular craft uh, being mass sighting uh, in, in, uh, in Arizona on the news. Uh, my parents had the news on. I'll never forget hearing that. And that's when I felt like I was vindicated when my parents seen that on TV, uh, that that big black triangular craft mass sighting. And I tried to explain that I seen, a, you know, two black triangular craft as well. I tried to, you know, explain it. What to was them. it like between 93 and 97? Did you have constant dreams? Oh, man. Out of your head? Let me tell you, from, from 93 on, I read every probably every book on UFOs and different shapes and, uh, you know, things from all over the world. I watched probably every show and VHS that they had on, on UFOs, uh, back then, because I was trying to figure out what was going on. It, it really, uh, it really messed with my head, you know, trying to figure that out. And do you think, uh, uh, uh before that incident, like, UFOs, undefined flying objects, did you notice maybe an increase after you're 13 or something? Or do you feel like maybe because of this, whatever happened to you? Actually, what do you think, before we get there, what do you think it did happen to you, like through your dreams and stuff? Do you feel like you knew they know what they were doing to you by any chance? No, I, I have no memory of being on board a craft. I have no memory of seeing beings or anything like that you know i just all the time was gone and i can't I, I i still to this day i i can't recollect what happened i have no clue where all that time you ever, went very you strange. ever thought about doing the getting uh the hypnotized thing and all that yeah i i just don't want somebody digging around in my brain messing it up worse than it already is you know what i mean uh i, I you know i how can you trust somebody like that? I mean, I just can't trust. I don't care how good you are at it. I just can't trust somebody digging around in my brain. And, and not just digging around. Is it something you, you ever want to know? You ever think of planting something right? in there? Or, is this something? What, sure, what if, there's a lot I want to know. Uh, I, know but, I want to know where all that time went. I want to know what happened in between. Aren't you, and wouldn't you be worried, too? Not just them messing around your brain. To find out something that you kind of like, they did what? You know what I mean? Like, like a, a shock value. I know you want to know, but... 
Isn't that well, afraid itself? Yeah, sure. It's frightening because God forbid, you know, it was a, a bad encounter, right? Then, you know, I would have to live with that trauma. God only knows what that would do. So I'd, I'd rather not know, you know, uh, since, since then I've had experiences, uh, but, but more or less, I just call it like having a, a either a, a good dream or a bad dream is how I perceive it. Like uh, I, I had an encounter not too long ago where uh, I was taken and I, I was getting dragged down a hole and then they threw me in a room and they had this big uh, drill come out and they put it through my shoulder and I remember sp- smelling my skin and everything burning and feeling the drill go through my shoulder and I woke up and I was all messed up. My shoulder was in a lot of pain for days after that. So I've had experiences like that. And then I've had real peaceful experiences where I, I've been taken and, uh, you know, they, they try to give you some kind of information that they don't want weapons of mass destruction in space and this and that. But, you know, I always, I always equated to like, you know, watching all this UFO mm-hmm. stuff and my sensory overload. So I'm having nightmares about it. I never say that I was like truly abducted. You know, I, I never go that far to say it actually happened. I always say it was just like a bad dream or something like that. Or, you know, in your heart it happened. Oh, no, I know. I, let me tell you, man. I know in my heart of hearts, I, I know that something happened, uh, but I can't prove it. Therefore, you know, it happens to you. And then next thing you know, you wake up on your couch or you wake up, uh, you know, sitting up in your chair and you passed out watching TV or something and you had that experience. But then you wake up and you're back in your house. So it's hard to say, man, was I really taken and put back, you know, on my couch sleeping or like it's so weird. It's so hard to like figure it out. I know I'm jumping the gun for a second. I know you're working on a uh, you're working on a documentary. Because uh, the documentary I put in the chat, guys, that is uh, Supernatural Spectrum. Great documentary. Check it Check it out. Um, is part of your documentary that you're p- making that – I know you probably don't want to spoil anything, but is it also going to be part of your experience about this inc- incident? Uh, no, the, the documentary is uh, more or less about all the UFO sightings that go on. It's called Extraterrestrial City. And it's about all the UFO sightings that are going on all over the world. And basically Staten Island is the primary location. We're going to, uh, we're all the investigating that I do. And we had MUFON come in and check out a bunch of things. And, uh, we found out that New York is like number two on the, uh, the sightings list for the most sightings. And, um, I'm MUFON said Staten Island is like one of the, and New York state itself is like one of the biggest hotspots right now. Uh, so you're going to hear a lot of that. You're going to hear a couple of famous celebrities in the show discuss a whole bunch of different things. It's going to be based on that, sightings and stuff like that. So beyond that main one at 13, have you had any minor ones since then, by any chance, of oh, feeling being oh, taken? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, I consider them uh, more like dreams because that's how they feel, like a nightmare that you can see, feel, and smell everything. Um, I had that one, like I just told you, where I was taken. I sent you the pictures. The one I was taken, they dragged yeah, me down the hole. Um, okay. And they drove just me to my shoulder. Picture. Yeah, that one. So I, I had this commissioned by uh, Chris Holm drew this for me. So these these beings now, had heart-shaped heads. They and were, that, and they so that being a picture is, is through your what you remember if they look like in your dream. Right. Yep. Heart shaped heads. They they were relentlessly evil. These these beings. Do you remember um, what color they are? Yeah, they reminded me of the grays, but their skin color had more like a pinkish blue pigmentation to it. So I don't know if that that gray color that you see on the these alleged grays is a, a protective layer that they wear over themselves, and their actual colors like a pinkish bluish green pigmentation on their actual skin. Or what? But these guys were like a pinkish, bluish, greenish color. Now this that picture was, yeah, shows like them like dragging yeah. you. Did you felt like in your dream they were dragging you like that? Yeah, I you know I, I felt like I was stoned when they were doing that, and I couldn't get used to my legs or my arms or anything. <clears throat> and I just being the whole the whole floor was oval, all the doorways were oval. There was no 
squares or any everything was rounded edges uh on this this craft or whatever they had me on um and they dragged me and i i would come to a little bit as they would drag me and i would get enough strength to open my eyes and try to say something and then i would fall back out yeah God, it's, i mean for yourself man when you look at these pictures knowing that's you and them i mean what does that make you feel like? I mean, what, what, what goes, you know what I mean? I mean, what, how do you feel when you see that? Yeah, no, it's, well, I mean, I've seen it so much now that I'm used to it, but I mean, the first couple of times I seen it when Chris was drawing it, I was like, wow, man, you, you nailed that. Cause we had a couple of different renditions prior to this, but I mean, he nailed it. it it's, it's, it's like reliving your dream again. It's like yeah. seeing, it's like seeing a, a, a flash card of a section of your dream, you know? He really what did trips a good me job. out, what trips trips me out is this one, and and and, I, and I'll tell you why, and I, and I, I'll tell you why. One night, I can't make claims that I, I I was taken. I can't make claims, but one night I felt like like something took me, and and at the same time, on the other side of the world, my brother was uh, uh in Europe. He almost had. The similar kind of dream, not exactly, but but he had some pains. And, and the next day, uh, next day or two, I went to a, a doctor because the pain was just dramatic here. And finding out, I have a ripped muscle in there. there. There was a rip. There was a tear. Don't know, and we don't know how to tear. But I dreamt something like happened here. And then when I was uh, uh, on air live, my, my brother, I can't even remember what show it was. And I go, man, I go, I just, sorry, I'm late for the show, guys. I, I just went from a doctor. I have a rip here. And uh, my brother was like, what day was that? What happened? What? And he had pain in the same exact spot. Not Now, he never, he never went to a doctor. So he, technically, he could have had a tear himself. I don't know. But we had wow. dreams that something has happened to us. But what's weird is we're not twins. That's pretty he's strange. Two, he's three years older than me. And there was a, another time when we I busted my ankle and he had it hurt ankle like the same time in that day. It's like it's like is it is that just luck? You know, one time, okay, luck. Second time, and then we had a third time where we had different pains, wasn't like marks or anything, but yeah, and then my brother uh one time on his arm out of nowhere, had a scar. He never had a scar there before. So seeing that where you felt like they stabbed you there, it's like the same spot where I, I have I have one I have one too right here. See this? See that scoop mark? Let me yep, yep. I woke up yep, with that. my brother was a little bit more a little bit more on his arm here but almost the same exact thing i woke up with that one morning crazy and you know shit. and then when you when i start hearing other people's stories like yourself and you're looking at stuff like wow why oh, do people point in your, the exact in, same area the guy that drew these is in your chat right now chris home wow that's the and i actually had to go to um um not not uh rehabilitation for a couple months to re repair that and even when the doctor sent me there he goes you know like you he, he asked me the question you know were you stretching out like like extra to have that tear now and and i remember telling him nothing different than what i do now you know it was it was during the pandemic so i got laid off so i wasn't stretching like at work so they never even knew exactly how it got ripped. Now, can I make claims? No, I I, I can't. But <laughs> I feel like I there's feel. something there. And seeing that picture, when you show it to me, it's like, oh my god, that is exactly where my tear was. Yeah, I had that it's shoulder. I had that shoulder replaced because I, I was crushed at work a couple of years ago. I'd have that shoulder replaced among other things. That's the exact shoulder I had replaced, and that's that that shoulder. Somebody had said, "Well, maybe they were trying to repair something that was that was screwed up in you, or something like that." But these guys were relentless. They were evil. They were not nice. Uh, and that's the only time I had an experience with beings where they weren't nice. These guys were evil little bastards. I couldn't stand them, man. I, if I could have got up off that table, 
I would have laid a beating on somebody. Then hey, this that- right here, this is when I was 13 years old. Um, I was talking with Olaf Rockner. He's a famous uh, UFO artist. And he and I uh, are friends and we were talking and he wanted to paint um, what happened to me when I was 13. So I let him go ahead and do it. And he came up with this and he, he nailed it spot on. We talked for a couple months about this and um, he did a fabulous job. He really did. Now, um, like I said, one of my uh, friends uh, mentioned to me that he had a hard time to ever, he got married, to tell his wife about his experience with the Bigfoot, you know, because, you know, you're thinking of what that person is going to think of you. Of course, you're, you're, you're a happily married person. Did I don't you go through something like right. that? I, yeah, I, I don't give a shit what people think. I, I, I look. You're not going to – look, if, if somebody doesn't believe you or somebody doesn't give a shit what you got to say, well, that's their problem. That's my story. This happened to me, and I'm sticking to my guns. I don't care who believes what, you know? And it helps me to get these things drawn out and to physically see them again. Um, for me, it helps seeing it like that, uh, have a representation of what happened so I could physically put my finger on something and say, that's what it looked like. That's how it happened because over time, your memories get diluted. So it's good to have it, you know, drawn out while it's fresh in your memory. I could care less so, what people uh, think. So from the beginning, you, you told your wife about your experience and all that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the morning yeah. I woke up when I had that incident, um, when they had the, they drilled through my arm and everything. Uh, I remember my wife walking down the stairs like 15 minutes after I woke up because I had passed out on the couch. And I said, did I did I walk downstairs last night or something like that? So she's like, I don't know. And I says, I'm in a lot of pain. My shoulder's killing me. She's like, well, what happened? You sleep, you know, you sleep wrong. Or I said, I guess I slept on the couch. I said, but my shoulder's killing me. She said, what happened? And I told her what had happened. And she's like, that's crazy. Oh, my God. I was telling her the story. And she's like, you don't think because you're watching all these UFO things and shit like that, that you're having crazy dreams like that? I'm like, probably. But I felt pain in in this experience, you know? So that 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 started make me have this theory that maybe you could be abducted from your consciousness. Maybe they could take your consciousness and abduct it and and experiment on you that way while you're sleeping, you know, just take your soul or your consciousness and abduct you that way. Leave your physical body here and, and take your conscious body and, and do things to it. And it's kind of a I know it sounds weird, but kind of cool. She knows everything too. Hopefully, nothing ever happens to you because of this. To kind of keep an eye on you in a way, if another big, huge experience happens again, where you lose hours and you don't know where you're at, you know, you kind of have somebody kind of well, knows you've been through. The best way I tell everybody that I believe that everybody has missing time, and I, and I'll prove it to you. Have you ever been driving your car? Oh, and you zone 100%. out. And you have yep. no idea how you got to the next destination without smacking into another car? 100%. Right. So how, how does that happen without you smacking into another car? How can you just zone out? One minute you're at point A and the next minute you're at point B and you're like, how the hell did I get here, right? So from point A to point B, how do you know you weren't taken? How do you know something didn't happen to you? How do you know you weren't abducted? Not even in the car. Point A to point be, B. I will be sitting down and it's 2 o'clock. And the wife goes, time to go. What do you mean it's time to go? We're not leaving until 8 o'clock. It is 30 minutes to 8. Where the hell the five hours go? It happens. And not just in a car. Yeah, it's just. And you sit there and you're like, what? What?" That's why I believe these experiences happen to everybody. But you just don't realize it sometimes. You don't put two and two together. Mm. You know? You think maybe because of what's happening to you. You, uh, um, I'm, I'm not talking about the UFOs that are identifying flying objects. I'm talking about the things that we think we know that's from somewhere else than this planet. That you might have the ability to see them a lot easier, or they sense you. You know, they're kind of watching you in a way. I do think that they watch. I think they watch all of us. But I think that being out in the field, and. I, <laughs> I'm prone for shining that laser on these objects all the time. I got that green laser pointed, man, and I'm always flashing it at them. So they definitely know that I'm 
Somebody's they flashing you know the light at the plane. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to straighten this guy out. We're going to stick a rod in his ass when we get him, <laughs> you know, but they know that I'm, I'm watching them and filming them. Uh, so it's only logical that they can be watching me or watching us, all of us. I mean, what else would they be here for? You know, to check our natural resources, map out our land. And, you know, a lot of these craft that I film, I've come to believe that they're their version of a drone. Like, uh, you know, we send drones up all the time, predator drones, this and that, that are unmanned. I happen to think that a lot of these crafts that we see that are extraterrestrial in nature that we can't pinpoint are their version of our drone. That's what I think a lot of these crafts are. I always felt they're basically only here for two reasons. First reason is to explore, like you said, resources, yeah. humans, animals. <clears throat> Second reason why they would be here. Because they want to take over. Otherwise, you would have think they would have, uh, uh, maybe they have, or they would have already reached out their hands. But they don't want us to know that they're here. You know, because... Well, look at it this way, Eric. They would have reached out their hands in friendship a long time ago. But look, look at how our government treats everybody, right? Yes. They, they're not the nicest people. They're not the most trustworthy people, right? If we had our hands on extraterrestrials, the first thing our government's going to do is cut them up and study them. Nobody would want that because if we went somewhere and we found extraterrestrials, we would want to operate on them and cut them up and turn them inside out to try to figure out what they are too, right? I mean, that's just science. And who the hell would want to have that done to them? What do you think? They don't know how we are? You know, so much more advanced than us. There was a, uh, I know I'm going to Star Trek, but there was an episode of Star Trek, and they talk about, you know, when the Vulcan's going to, you know, first contact with Earth. They're only going to do it when the Earth is ready. Right. And that, and that is so true because if you look at our planet right now, dude, we got borders. We, we, we don't allow people to cross to other countries. It's ridiculous. You know, I mean, guns, weapons, you know, uh, we can't, we have borders with Canada, the nicest people in the world. Uh, it's, it, you know what I mean? We, we can't even be friends with ourselves. We're paying tax I mean, on water, Eric. How can you tax somebody for a natural reason like water? Yes. I mean, we we can't even I mean? become one world so yet. Yeah. I Why know. would you come? Because it's you're just 2022 you and we still have people that are racist. We still have people that are bigots. We still have people that are homophobic and xenophobic. And and who don't like Jewish people? Who don't like black people? Who don't like Puerto Rican? It's disgusting. You know, we're not going to get a visit from extraterrestrials to the point where we can communicate like we're communicating now until we can all love yeah. each other as one. And, and when you keep on watching the news, keep hearing, we got to put bigger walls, harder walls. Yeah. And it's, it's almost more like a tragic event after the next, man. Maybe trying love, trying kindness first, you know? I agree. And all that. I mean, if you look, guys look at my pin comment of the day, my pin comment of today is you cannot do kindness too soon. For you never, you never know how soon it will be too late. And I feel like that is such a true quote because we're almost on the on the edge of if you expect the world to be kind, you gotta start it now. I mean, just somebody's gotta like take down a wall now i mean everybody's otherwise it's, it's just gonna be too late it and, takes and maybe they so want to be friends more. with us but they it can't takes, because we can't help ourselves out it takes so much more energy to be evil it takes so much less energy to turn your love light on man and just be a, a person of peace love and happiness try to help another human being that's that's what this world has to start doing helping each other not fight with each other start caring for each other you know Instead of, you know, putting somebody down, big them up, help them out. You know what I mean? People don't do that anymore. It's like everybody's out for their own. It's, it's such a there mess. Is, are. It's Our country is better than yours. Yours is better. It's like, And it trickles you know, right down into everyday life. It trickles and, down even into the YouTube world. My channel's better than yours. This guy's uh, a jerk off. This guy's cool. This girl's an asshole. This guy's nice. I mean, it's all bullshit, man. And, and in America, and it doesn't end. matter what... And it doesn't matter what party is the power party that's president during that term. It, it, they're all the same. It's all that's right. Nobody could get along. I mean, it's almost yeah, like it's how can we shit. get along when we this is part part cinema? We're we're, we're, all, we're all agreeing on this. It's just so sad. But let me ask you this now: there's there are some people believe that 
that there's actually alien life that's among us. They're actually like walking among us. We just don't see them. Now, as far as like, like you being taken there from afar, do you feel that maybe there, uh, there are some that's walking among us, maybe looking Absolutely. like us by any chance? Absolutely. I believe that they're uh, interplanetary. They come from inner earth, interdimensional. I believe that they're here walking, living right among us, hybrids. I believe in all of that. I think all of that's plausible because when you look up into the stars at night, it's endless, right? So you would have to be pretty naive to think that, A, we're the only beings in the world, right? Uh, because space is infinite. So you don't know how many came here, visited, stood. You don't know if they were born and raised here, and then we were some kind of freak accident humans on their planet. Who the hell knows? We could have been brought from elsewhere and came here, our distant relatives. None of us know the answers to anything. So anything's plausible. And people in the chat, I apologize if I'm not looking at the chat so often to see what you guys are saying. Sometimes I want I want to uh, pay attention more to the person's story than trying to do both. So if you think I'm ignoring any of you guys, please don't think that. I, I just, I'm so interested. I never got in like deep with Anthony. I know his beliefs, but I wanted to know, to know everything. So, so what do you think? You know, we have such a short life and, and I hate to say that we do, you know, if you think about it at our age, but hopefully we got another 30, 40 years, you know, in, in, in theory, do you hope that somehow the, the the truth comes out to a point where almost 80, 70, because you know, not everybody on the planet is ever going to believe everything, but at least like 75% of the planet knows it's true now. You ever feel like maybe within our, our last years of our life, hopefully it's 30, 40, 50 years, that, that we're going to see that, we're going to sense that? I, you know, I, I say it all the time that uh, this might be the year where something happens where it all changes, you know what I mean? But slowly but surely, uh, information's trickling down. Now the governments are starting to come forward and say, especially the United States government's starting to come forward, talk about UFOs and aliens and this and that. And maybe in another 20 years from now, we'll be further out into that point where we're saying they're here, they're living among you, there's nothing to worry about. And then maybe then they'll start showing themselves more and more to us. You know, you it's know, possible. There is a lot of a uh, uh, blast of the government for good reasons. For good reasons. But what I mean is, like, like the UFO conference that they had. Some people say it was just a smoke screen. It was just a joke. But, but take that away. Take that away. You can call it smoke screen or not. But if you're a young kid and you see the government talking about the UFOs, even though that could, if you think that's a smoke screen or not, that event probably inspired a percentage of people on this planet to do their research so if you want to say what's good had come out of that inspiration for some people to also dig in to what the truth is i don't know if you feel the same way about that ufo conference but when you saw that UFO conference, what do you think? What, did, what, what was your thoughts on it? I thought it was a joke, to be honest with you. I thought they could have had a lot better footage. Oh, up there. yeah. I thought, but, you know, they could have had way better arguments up there. But that, that only goes to show you that the government's still hesitant to really tell you what's going on. Well, you they know? told you things you already knew. They told you a lot of bullshit is what they told you. But I still think if it's inspired some people. Right, but at least they're it. talking. At least they got an open dialogue now, right? Yeah. The next big thing that has to happen is pilots that had uh, sightings and stuff need protection so they could come forward and say, you know, what happened without getting jammed up. That's the next big thing that needs to happen. Well, anybody would tell you who's been in the military, I would have been in the military, would tell you that you're never going to know everything. They might tell you snip and clips just yeah, to get no, you happy on your way. But you're never going to know what's out there, what they have. You what don't need the know. government to tell you what's going on, Eric. Go out at night, get yourself an night vision camera, go outside and go look in the sky for yourself. Go do your own investigating. You don't need them to tell you what's going on because you're never going to get the full answer from them anyway. Go out there and try to figure it out for yourself and do it, see what's going on. It's not hard. I go out every single it's night. Not hard. It's not hard. But I think one of the things that's the hardest to do is 
is when, when you're re not just researching, say you're going to YouTube, like I said, let's just say YouTube. Who can you trust? You know what I mean? Like, 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 like you're saying, the people who are uh, putting things up, faking things just for clicks and views. You know, who are the people that you can trust? I think that's the hardest for anybody because there's I, tons, I say there's thousands of people with channels now. You can't trust anybody these days. You got to trust yourself. That's why it's so important. I always tell everybody when I put my videos up, don't trust what I'm showing you. You can like it. You can enjoy watching the content. But go out there and do it yourself if you want answers. Get out there in the field. Put your boots on. Grab your camera. Go out in a dark area at night of the sky. Go hang out for a couple hours outside and film. I guarantee you, you're going to see something that you cannot explain. Guarantee it. And No, you're right. And I always tell people, when you hear something for the first time, don't ever take that word for it. Research it right. different ways. Get That's right. four or five people. Try to see is there is there connections, if they're something the same. Because that's the only way you're going to get to the truth of, of, of and, anything. And you're right. Do do yourself. Now, let me ask yeah. you this. So, so you go out. So is it now, does does Anthony have a process? So what I mean is, like I said, I'm pretending everybody in the chat that you you don't know Anthony at all. So, Anthony, you go out and, and, and you see something. You you, you 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 got your camera. You caught something. What's your process from there before you upload it? Is there a process or do you just upload it? No. I have a laptop with me. That my, my laptop, my cell phone, and an iPad, and I have all different software on there. I'm tracking um, different satellites, SpaceX, and then I have on my iPad, I'm tracking all the satellites in the general area. I'm, I'm checking uh, plane radar to see what planes are in the general area. If none of those things check out, if it's not a satellite or it's not an unmanned aerial vehicle, because now they got apps to tell you where drones are and your general area to a UAV app, I check all of that out. And if in real time, I'll have my son with me or somebody with me checking that out in real time. And if nothing's in the general area, satellite, plane, drone, then, then it's an unknown. The only other thing that it could be would be an unregistered government satellite like a top secret spy satellite or a craft that's not registered because um it hasn't been it's top secret hasn't come out yet and we won't have that on none of these apps so it, it, it's either then it's an extraterrestrial craft or it's top secret and we just don't know what it is i want to show um like like example from your own from this is from your own channel um of this video called okay cigar unifo Cindy. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to show this to everybody. And, and then I want you to explain like, like, like this and how you, uh, uh, what, what you did exactly before you put this one out. So everybody let's, let's check this one out. I know some of you have seen it, but there might be some of you who have not. And I hope there's a lot of you that have not seen this because if you haven't check this out and we'll have Anthony explain it to us. Good morning, Anthony S. Sinclair here, host of Unidentified S4. On the morning of July 26th, 2022, at 4.06 a.m., I filmed this cigar-shaped craft flying past Jupiter at a high rate of speed. What boggled my mind was this craft changed its course. Not only that, at the rate of speed it was traveling, it should have broke the sound barrier. However, it made no sound at all. If anyone has any information on this object, kindly reach out to topfilesf4 at gmail.com or on Identified S4 YouTube channel. MUFAN has been alerted to the situation and investigators are on the case. If anybody's seen anything, please reach out right away. Thank you so much. You're about to witness something amazing. This unidentified flying object is traveling straight up into the Earth's atmosphere. I hit it with a laser and what happens? Well, you guessed it. Course correction, the object changes direction and starts traveling the opposite way. The only way that can happen is if an object is under intelligent control. Satellites, the International Space Station, 
anything Russia or China has, a missile, none of that stuff changes its course. This object responded to my laser and changed. Not only that, my compass can't get a fix. It is going haywire, north, south, east, west, north, northwest, south, southeast. It's going haywire. Can't get a read on the object, which is even more mind-boggling. This happened in July, a couple of days ago, and I wanted to share it. Now, I want to I want to ask you a direct question first. When you when you saw that, and you said in your video that you, you know Mufon has been uh, notified. What is the process of Mufon anyway? I mean, when you do, when you say you did the Mufon, what is that exactly, and and what what do you expect after you tell them what you saw from Mufon? Well, you know, MUFON's a mutual UFO network, yeah. so you send a report into them with the footage. I was lucky, fortunate enough to have footage to go along with it, and then you fill out a whole questionnaire, like 150 or so questions you send into them, and then uh, MUFON yeah, investigator. Before, right? Oh, no? I never all right, so then, I, then a MUFON investigator gets in contact with you, and they ask you a million questions and all of that. Now, I just happened to be friends with a MUFON investigator, so the morning of... I was able to to have a meeting with that MUFON investigator in real time and show him the footage in real time. And he was able to do an assessment on it in real time. Mm -hmm. And between my footage and things that have happened in the past month on Staten Island that resemble the same craft, they were, to, they were able to discern that, you know, the craft wasn't a satellite due to the time, the date, the altitude. Um, I'm sure they checked oh, all their own flight well, they records. Tell you if it's not something... Oh, yeah. Yeah. They'll tell you if it is or it isn't or if they believe it to be or they believe it to not be. So and they believe that to be a cigar UFO. Wow. Do you think I mean, I, I don't know anybody from MUFON. That's great. You know, somebody in there. Now, I was think... told I was told now that that craft, you see it as it looks like a cigar and then it, it changes, it changes direction and then changes shape. They believed that it was getting ready to de dematerialize. Like I caught the tail end of it, like dematerializing to disappear is what I caught. I caught it from beginning to end, in other words. But like I said, I don't know really anybody from MUFON. You do, know, you do know somebody there. But is there any fear of do you send us something so good that they're not going to tell you? what you should know by reporting, if you know what I'm talking about. Like, like, like they don't, oh my God, this is something. We can't have him know and nobody knows that this is the real, real deal. Yeah, no, well, that's why they, they hired me and now I'm one of the men in black. So <laughs> I'm not worried about that. <laughs> that's funny. Maybe, maybe I should, uh, 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 and, and, and good news, guys, I was hired too. All right, so now Eric and I are both with the men in black. <laughs> We're both we're both men in black. We got Welcome the album. Welcome aboard, man. Welcome aboard. <laughs> because I always wonder, you know, there's even like Bigfoots and stuff. There's places that, that you're supposed that you could report it to, or like DNA. DNA has always been a big, huge topic with with the Bigfoot. And I'm always like, but well, what if you do send it to a place and they know exactly what it is? Would they even tell you? Well, they, well, I, I believe that MUFON, I, I know for a fact MUFON has their own database. They, they're collecting their own information, and they take your story. If your story is good enough, they'll use it for whatever. They're definitely taking all that data that comes in, and they build this awesome database with it. So, like, for example, MUFON was kind enough to send me – let me see if I can find it in real time real quick – the, like, complete um, charts on Staten Island – of all the sightings that come into MUFON uh, about Staten Island. So, for example, these are just a few that came in for July. Like, I'll send it to you now. Um, these are real images of actual sightings that are going on on Staten Island that come into MUFON. So this is how active where I live is. It's insane. It's really insane. Ooh, I mean, you that. you wouldn't even believe how many sightings come in. I'm gonna pop that up. Let me, and th this is just here. four pages of sightings that happened in July. Uh, and I have like 77 pages of these. 
So this is directly from MUFON. And this is all these UFOs you see are all different um, areas on Staten Island where UFOs have been sighted. They have even had um, actual people see actual beings. So you'll see like an alien head on one of them. Somebody actually saw uh, an alien being. See that right there? See the alien head? Yep. Somebody somebody said that they witnessed an extraterrestrial on Staten Island. And that's uh, near the Triangle. They've seen the black triangles on Staten Island. I mean, there's been so many encounters on Staten Island. It's mind boggling. It's right now the state of New York's number two. Staten Island's listed at number three for hotspots right now. This Who's year. number one? I didn't ask. I don't know. You may hear about it in the documentary. Well, every time I hear it, they always say, honestly, I hear, I'm hear. i not saying because I live in the state, but they always say Washington is one of the number one. Oh, Washington's a big state. And, you know, if you're really interested in this, the statistics on things, Cheryl Costa is one of the best statisticians when it comes to UFOs. Uh, she catalogs everything. So you check out uh, Cheryl Costa. She has a bunch of books out. They'll tell you all the UFO hotspots. Uh, check her out. You should leave a link in your description for everybody. And it'll tell you where all the hotspots are throughout the whole United States. But that's a lot of sightings just for July, Eric, on Staten Island in New York. People will be shocked of how many sightings there are around the world. And this that, is all that that, that, are, that are just reported. I was just going to say that this is the ones that people are reporting. You know, it could be double or triple this, just people that don't report it. They don't know who MUFON is. They don't know who these eight different other agencies are, National UFO Reporting Center. They're not familiar with these agencies to report it. So they just see it. Or they film it, and then it's like, you know, they tell their family and friends about it, and then that's as far as it goes. And, and that's, who, who, why, who really that's why I well, that's why I was asking you, like, how to report it, move on and stuff, because that's the thing. None of us knows where to report things. I mean, you know, yeah, a if, common you just, person, if you just, you know, know Google uh, um, um, move on, you know, report a UFO sighting, it'll it'll pop right up. And same with the National UFO Reporting Center. And then everything there is just a step-by-step -step on the questionnaire. You just fill it out. Uh, and if you're fortunate enough to have video and photos, send it in too, because it's very important to document all this stuff so we can build a collective like this and we can say how many sightings were in, you know, Bridgeport, Long Island, how many were in Scranton, Pennsylvania, Allentown, Staten Island, Baltimore, you know, Hartford, Connecticut. So it, it's important to assess how many places are getting all these different sightings and how many of them happen there monthly. Yeah. It just really, I mean, it, it's fascinating. It, 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 and, it, it, and you it, look it, at something like this and you say, I'm not crazy. I'm not the only one seeing this. Look at all these people that are having the same experiences that I'm having. I'm not the only one. No, you're not. All around the world. It's I mean, happening everywhere. It's and everywhere. I thought I was crazy. Uh, I sat on my dreams about extraterrestrials for quite some time. Why? Because I said, people are going to think I'm out of my fucking mind talking about having experiences with extraterrestrials and dreaming about them and having these weird experiences. But nope, there's tens of thousands of people having the same experiences, going to sleep at night. And next thing they know, they're, they're on a craft or they're getting dragged down a hallway or they're getting a procedure done to them. Uh, I know so many people that have had similar experiences. It's not even funny. Let me ask you this then. Uh, while, while you were an active police officer, and this goes for anybody in, in the work world, while you were an active police officer, do you feel like you could talk about this with co-workers? <laughs> no. See, they'll I think, they'll and, abuse and, and you. Yeah. Yeah, no, unless you find a like-minded person. You know, you know, when you when you're when you're working with the police department, you you those guys are very macho. Yeah. Bunch bunch, you know what and I mean? So firemen, military. Firemen, I mean, you know, I'm friends with don't get me wrong, I'm friends with cops and firemen that have had experiences. My friend Andrew Razowitz was a firefighter for the FDNY. He and I are, are close now, and he's known as the psychic firefighter. He's actually very famous in the community. He's actually doing getting ready to do an A and E show. Uh, he's coming out here to New York. We're going to film together for the A&E channel soon. And he's had tons of experiences. His experience was, was so pronounced that he actually left the fire department and became a full-time psychic medium ufologist. He followed his passion. 
Well, that's why I always bring it up because I always admire people in certain positions to come out to even admit what they saw. Because think about it, you're a, pi you're a pilot. We know pilots for airport have seen a lot. Oh, without a doubt. But, but they have to be evaluated to even That's be right. able to fly to make sure, you know, this person is not losing their minds because, you know, you're flying right. 200 hundreds of people, people you're in charge of, right? Yeah. You can't just come out and say, I'm seeing UFO. Oh, really? Come, come to your appointment. Let's see. Yeah. Your, you know, and, and it's true. It's true. And, and, and there's people that I know that, that I've talked to up here in Washington, like, like even like, like Bigfoot, they're like, Oh, I believe it. I just don't talk about it because I just don't have time because they live in an everyday busy world that they just don't care because, you know, you got to pay your taxes. You got, you got kids to go to school. There's so much going on in your life that you do believe in it, but, you, but you just don't do anything about it because life itself is so crazy. That's right. And, and it's hard to, it, you know, yeah, we're doing a YouTube channel, but beyond this, when we're done, we're, you know, you'll probably have to go to start shopping, get it. So it's hard to what need to sit down to, for, I know we tell people they should do their research, but it is hard for people to even squeeze in time to do that research. That's right. So I respect the people who, who do it and come out because it's it's not difficult. And to leave your – you're telling me a guy left the fireman to do this. I mean, he must be so dedicated to know what he saw because you're taking a paycheck and you're basically saying goodbye – Starting over, I don't know what he does now. I don't know if he's making money off what he's doing now, but it can't be the same as as you're getting a salary being a, a fireman. He's actually doing quite well for himself, thank God. Um, he's he's doing way better than he would have if yeah. he was a fireman. But ninety percent of the people aren't will will never. You're taking a cut. Ninety five percent of the people. He's he's doing very well, thank God. You know, and like I'm like actually. Myself, uh, I, you know, I wish you and I can have a million views, subscribers, enough where we could go out even more with all this equipment. But we know in the real world, you got to build up, build up your reputation. He's not a, uh, he's not big with YouTube, but I'm gonna drop his link in the chat because people are asking. And uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to, what do you call it, Eric? If you want to uh, check out his site. And look at some of his UFO uh, videos. Yeah. You you can yeah. once you put uh, it. I'm gonna drop it right now. Put it in the chat, and I'll click on it. We'll check it out right here. He has some amazing. Oh, I got a Chris Holm, You're Chris a legend, Holm. Chris Holm, man. What a great guy. Let me and uh, a phenomenal artist. I commissioned me, Chris to make those to make those photos you guys seen. He's phenomenal. So if anybody is looking to have an experience of something that they need drawn. That's your man right there. This is for you, Chris. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate yeah. that. Everybody knows on this channel, every dollar you you dedicate it actually goes into cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a weird in a weird way, you know. The more you donate, the more times I get to play Barry the Bigfoot, <laughs> <laughs> and and living because. You guys, guys, this is how you know if somebody's cool with you or not. If you, if I kill someone else in a car, then there must be, there must be some bad blood going on. But nah, nah, that's great. So, so like as of right now, today, today, with everything you have gone through, everything you're seeing, and, and your channel to be able to talk about it, what are your feelings like right now, to up to the point where you're at today? What do you mean? My feelings on like, 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 do you feeling at least better now? You got your channel, you're talking about it. Oh, without a doubt. You know, let me tell you something. I've met some of the greatest people in the world. <laughs> hey, Ron, you're my, my brother right there. Ron's coming down <laughs> in a couple of days. We're going to film for the documentary together. I got and Ron coming I down. I got to give this to him too. <laughs> That's my brother from another mother right there, Cosmic Neighbors, man. Go check him out. Great channel. Um, thanks, Ron. Um, it, was, it, it is so good to have a platform where I can have like-minded people come and hang out and we could discuss what I'm going through, what they're going through, 
They can check out my footage. I can take out, check out their footage. And we don't just stop at UFOs. You know, we also love the paranormal. We love the cryptids. We cover it all. Uh, because why stop in one category? There's just so many amazing things going on in all different fields. Uh, it doesn't make sense just to stop at UFOs. I love it all. So, Well, because I'm not going to guarantee there's relations to one to the other, but I always say it's good to know more than less because sure. I've always talked to a lot of Bigfoot people. Like they're out in the woods, you know, and they hear things. They hear knocks on the wood. You know, what if – I always say, well, what if technically – what you're hearing is not a Bigfoot. What is that? What if that's a spirit? That's a ghost, or, or even an, an alien. I'm not saying it is or not, but more you know, more you can help you out during your investigations. You know, that's like right. yesterday I had John on my channel, and we we're talking about his abduction. But it seemed like lately he's been having a lot of paranormal things happening at his house seeing a black shadow and and that might not be a ufo checking up on him again it could be a paranormal i had a medium who i trust that was on my chat yesterday sensing that the person that he's seeing of the black shadow name is sean happened no on the show yesterday and and she's she's was she's been hired by a couple police uh stations to do help them out with some investigation. So this ain't just some some medium and, and, and stuff and knows what she's doing. And and when I and what why why am I even saying that? Well, because now maybe uh John could research because he said two people have died in his uh, uh place. Was one of them named Sean? You know what I mean? Wow. Even though it's UFO paranormal, and there's a belief that some of these alien are researching it through an orb. I can't back that up for hundred percent, but there is a belief that even the movie Starman, I'm not saying Starman's real, but I the love movie. Starman. In the movie Starman, when the alien ship came to earth, cr uh, landed or crashed, whatever you want to say, he was an orb until he found DNA to look like somebody. Right. Some people say that was based off some true folklore stories of aliens using the orb to get around. Right. What, what do you think of, of that? Uh, is that a crazy theory or you think maybe there, there could be some truth to it? No, there could be some truth to it. I Look, there's there's different types of orbs. You have extraterrestrial type orbs. There's a couple different ways those could go about too. You can have orbs that are drone type craft. Or I was thinking like this the other day because... Remember Bob Lazar said, and I know people hit and miss on Bob Lazar. I'm not talking about him and his beliefs. I'm talking about what he said about how the crafts fly. So take a regular disc craft like this, right? Now, when you see it like this, it's a regular disc craft. But he said they turn on their belly and they fly that way. But when it's flying that way, it's circular, right? It can look like an orb. So you could be seeing a disc craft. And then when it takes off and turns on its side, it could appear to be an orb. So you could be seeing a disc craft taken off and it appeared to be an orb, right? So that could be a disc craft. Or you can have an orb that could be a plasma orb, um, like just a collection of light. Uh, could be a drone, an extraterrestrial type drone. But then you have spirit orbs too, which can be uh, collections of you know, spirit energy that you're seeing. So when it comes to orbs, there's all multiple, there's different types of uh, ways to discern the, the whole orb thing. You can get in, talk about that for a day. That's Andrew, the psychic firefighter. Uh, some of his footage is, is really spot on. Is there one that... Uh... Uh, uh, scroll around, let's see. He had one where this thing was dancing through the, through the whole sky. I don't even know if this is the right one I, I guess click any one of them see what see what we think oh wow look at that holy moly what is that and that's got a purple color yeah wow that's in australia he lives in australia now he's in melbourne amazing and guys no airplane is going to use a purple color no 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 I want people to realize that. I know some people, oh, that's probably a helicopter or airplanes. They don't use no. purple colors. 
they actually have rules of what colors they can use when they're in the sky. Purple is not one of them. Let me, uh, you do that. I'm going to find the right video. I want you to set something out. Let me just find it. By any chance, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not calling you a medium or not. When you look at other people's videos and, and you see certain things, you, do you get a sense on the inside, like, oh, my God, there's something with that one? Like, you just feel it. In oh, here. yeah. Like, Andrew and I clicked right away. I'm like, this guy is going through the same shit that I'm going through, man. And we talked. We became, like, instant best friends, me and Andrew, man. Wow. Look at the size of that. That is one large illuminated object. You see how they're just powered up? I'm He's got one video where this object camera. is dancing I'm back not. and forth in the sky like I've never seen before. I just don't know what video it is. Look at this. This is a video of a CE5 close encounter at fifth con out in the middle of nowhere. This is at Warren Dyke State Park in Melbourne, Australia. So meditation, sit quiet for a few minutes. Wait till the sun goes down, go out in the middle of nowhere, and then you'll see around me right here that this ball drops, a type of orb around me, and then I could sense something above me. I point up in the sky as I'm feeling something in my heart, and boom, an enormous yeah, look at that appears overhead. This was captured on camera, and it was later analyzed. It was probably about 30 minutes of footage we were able to capture on this evening and compress that into a little video here. Everything's analyzed and 100%. What's a Grogu? Grogu is, is um, the the sky. Cool. Oh, Star Wars? Oh, this guy? This is five contact. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, my Grogu holds my phone. <laughs> I keep calling him Baby Yoda, and Baby Yoda, I forget, yes, I forget that he has a retro name, <laughs> Grogu. I mean, it's, I mean, he's yeah. Oh, oh I already show that one. That was the teaser one. Three UFOs during C five. So you got to get a real Baby Yoda, man. Oh, I do. I got, I got him down up uh, upstairs up. on my fireplace. <laughs> And I got I got yeah, where he has like down. the baby frogs that he eats. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Andrew, the psychic firefighter, he's more like a mainstream guy, you know. Like he has, you know, small YouTube channel, but he's more his TikTok is good, and his uh, he's more on the mainstream circuit. But uh, he does exactly what I do when it comes to filming these these objects in the sky, you know. And hold on, Ron. Now, Ron, there's so many new apps, so many new things out there. You know, I, I thought you might have been talking about a program or something. That yeah, you got me. I should have figured it out that that's <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're talking about. But I thought you might be talking about a new app or something. You know, click the. Uh, I just put one down on the bottom. You can check out. There's gonna be no volume, but. You could see all the orbs I film in the sky in this one one session. They just start coming in one after the other. And they, look how close they get to each other. Yes, yeah, satellites do not do that. They no. do not come any you know, unless Starlink now has got those satellites, but those satellites are like tiny little bullshit satellites in that chain. I know you're not making fun of me, buddy. I love it, Honest Chiana. He, he makes stuff. Look how close these two are to each other. And right there is four or five. I can yep. see. The They're everywhere. Six, seven. And you're not going to have that many no. planes doing some kind of a test all at once. Uh, Supernatural Spectrum, Matt has a question. Yeah, you Matt. Know, um do you have any videos over night camera reviews? My phone and monoculars ain't cutting it. 
Yeah, and my psionics, which I'm using right here, doesn't cut it either uh, to go all night and film. So uh, I tell everybody when they donate to my channel, uh, we're getting ready to buy a system that goes 24-7. Uh, so the camera, it, it'll go from like 9 o'clock at night to 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm planning to have that thing going. Then you'll be able to come to a separate channel uh, and watch the sky all night using our night vision system that'll be set up. Uh, so anybody could come to the channel and watch it because people cannot afford these uh, very expensive night vision systems and they all want to see it. So what I'm planning to do is buy a real expensive system, set it up on my roof, uh, aim it at the beach. Um, Ron cosmic neighbors found out that I'm a Bortle seven, which is a dark area for New York. And you'll be able to uh, come up there and watch this go on in real time. Ron, I'm sending you my uh, email address so I could give you my uh, my my house address. But yeah, there's just so many of these these orbs uh, in this one video. It's insane. So let's let's uh let's do this. You know, and, we're, and we're, also we're keep gonna... in mind that that you know I have software going that's telling me there's no satellites in the area no planes in the general area there's no faa strobe lights on none of these objects that you're looking at um so let me ask you this we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna wind down the show a little bit guys we're gonna wind down this is so fun i don't want to waste everything because i gotta do another deep down part two like this because this is this is where i have fun the most so so everybody who, who knows you who doesn't know you what is coming up in the near future for uh, Anthony and Unidentified S4 channel? And I'm going to show you guys a sample of the Unidentified channel. Uh, if you go to Unidentified s S4's channel, and you could just look here. And actually here, let me just put this. I know a lot of people have put this in the link. But I just want people who don't know Anthony, and hopefully everybody knows him. But just look at the tons of, of content. That's on here. His experiences, other UFOs where he felt enough to show everybody on here, his live shows. I mean, there's tons and tons of great content that's on this channel. Thanks. But man. saying about this channel, what's coming up for Unidentified S4? Well, uh, I, I was just published in uh, Paranormality Magazine. Uh, the actual full length story of when I was 13 and had that UFO uh, encounter with the double triangle craft will be in September's issue of Paranormality Magazine. You can pre order that at the end of this month. Um, Olaf Rockner commissioned a piece uh, from the same experience. He's now selling the artwork on uh, Redbubble, so you can purchase that on there. And Andy and I are working on our documentary extraterrestrial city uh ron from cosmic neighbors is also one of the producers and editors on that video uh and a cinematographer is going to be helping me out with that uh we're going to try to have that out for october uh but if we can't have it out for october maybe november because i'm not just going to put some shit video out there just to rush and get something out by october i want it to be perfect i want to put something out there that's perfect and free for everybody, you know, to enjoy. I don't want nobody spending, you no know, fifteen twenty dollars on a documentary. All this information should be brought to the general public for free. Everybody should know what's going on, and they should be able to enjoy it without having to blow money on it. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do now. And when that documentary does come out, what you could do to help out people is is watch it all, share it. You know, get more people to watch Absolutely. it, get involved, and and otherwise, other ways, you know, new people might subscribe to his channel or be, join members and stuff. So, and not so only you, that, you'll help. I don't, I don't help. say it, I don't say it enough. Uh, I live on Staten Island, New York, and I don't say this enough. If anybody ever wants to come out with me and uh, go out on the beach and, and film and share my equipment and learn how to sky watch using night vision and flare all of that. Uh, anybody's welcome to come join me. Just reach out, uh, email me. I'll take you out anytime. Uh, I'm out, you know, seven days a week, weather permitting. Um, 
you're more than welcome to join me anytime and come see it in real time for yourself. Uh, I'll, you know, if you're not a believer, I'll make you a believer. I'll show you the same things that I'm, you know, seeing in the sky and how I discern what they are and what they aren't. And you'll be able to make uh, and ascertain what they are for yourself. Oh, I can't wait because I'm going to be in New York next summer. I can't guys. wait, dude. I can't wait. You know, I guys, and the reason I'm being in New York, that's where my wife's family is. So un, uh, I'm not saying unfortunately, uh, I we always got to visit almost every two years. We try to go out every year, but sometimes we can't. But next year we are going out there for sure. And uh, since it's the wife's family, I, I like to get away. Don't let her hear that. I got to get away. And, and sometimes and Anthony is a good excuse for me to get away. Right. I, can say, I can say he's making another documentary. He wants me to be part of it. <laughs> Hey, the coffee's my door's always open and the coffee's always hot, Eric. You know where to come, buddy. <laughs> now, I used to live in I used to live in the uh on East Coast. I I lived for a while in Maryland. Uh I was stationed oh, in I was stationed in May, Cape May, New Jersey. Nice. And and I actually live upstate New York a little bit with the wife, but I liked I, I liked the Northwest a lot. So so I told I told my wife, you know, your family's great, but I got to get back to the Northwest. <laughs> everybody knows West Coast is the best. <laughs> it is. <laughs> my son just came home from California. He, he he wants to go back. He loved it out in Cali, man. He he wants to go back. <laughs> and all that, but guys, I appreciate everybody for uh, you, uh, joining to the joining joining us today. I, sometimes I just like, like to get deeper. I hear these stories, but. Sometimes it's better just one on one to actually hear it because sometimes I'm always more not the story itself. I like to study the man behind the story, what his feelings are like, you know. What does he, you know, you get to a point where when you're younger, you I hate to say it, you do care what people think of you. You really do. When you get older, you start to develop where you know what? I have a story and I just don't care anymore what people think. That's right. And, and, and it comes with age. And I'm always admired with young people who get that early, but that's not with everybody. And later in life, you do get to a point where screw them. They either like me for who I am, what I believe, or I don't want to be with these people. And I admire right. that, that Anthony's doing. And there are certain people like Connor and Matt that they just going out there already at a young age. And I do admire that. And I always mention that, but there is a part in your life that you start realizing that I just don't care what people think of me. They either right. like me for who I am because I'm not a cover of a book. I'm a real person. So I admire Anthony for just saying, this is me now. This is what I do. This is what I love. This is my passion. You either like it or go to another channel, you know? But of course, we want you guys to stay because we, we <laughs> like everybody. And 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 the last thing is is if if somebody doesn't want to go through Mufon, Anthony, can they go through you? Can they show Absolutely. you? Absolutely, hundred percent. And that's why uh, in the description, in the description, I put all of Identify S for his from his channel about on uh, about getting hold of him so you can show him your footage. So if you don't feel comfortable with MUFON for whatever reason, let Anthony take a crack at it. Let him take a look at it, and he'll give you a recommendation and tell you what you should do next with the footage that you have. Uh, people are asking where they could buy the, the print. So it's on Red. Uh, it's on Redbubble. I'm writing it right now as we speak. Are you... And the guy's name is Olaf Rockna. It's too it's too much for me to copy and paste in the chat. But if you come over to my channel and yesterday's video, the link will be in the description. I'll also give it to Eric. Uh, maybe he could put it in his description for you guys to yeah. find as well. But it's, yeah. uh, if you just put Olaf Rockna unidentified S4 art, it, it should pop up. Uh, and I appreciate everybody in the chat who's posting links to our channels and all that. And, of course, Anthony didn't tell you guys. He got a lot of projects. Come on. He's, we're still, he's still playing. Got, oh, man. We got cartoon number four coming out, man. <laughs> I can't wait for this one. This one's going to be sick. I hope you're all ready. And I hope everybody's donating Eric so we can make this a proper cartoon like the rest of them. Oh, I'd like to, you know, shoot. Well, it's been it's been most, mostly on a monthly basis. Yeah, I like to shoot one out every single good day. with the views, huh, Eric? 
I, they're yeah. picking up, man. That's awesome. They are, you know, they're, you know, there's people, unfortunately, they look at a cartoon and they're like, ah, eh, you know. But you guys got to understand, you know, young people, young kids, you know, sometimes a cartoon or a movie is what inspires them to look up in the sky. For right. me as a kid, it was Star Wars. You know, somebody might look at the cartoon like, hey, there, there's aliens and there's a Bigfoot that's walking with them and talking. That might be something that might trigger somebody to look at it, you know, and Bigfoot saved the world. That's right. Come on. Come on. I could have easily made me run to the ship and get into the missile and make me the hero. But I'm like, Bigfoot has its day and we need to open our minds to aliens, Bigfoot's the possibilities because it, it might be them are the ones that's going to save us from our corruption government oh, yeah. and, the, and the greed of the world. It might be not from us saving the world. It might be through a Bigfoot. An alien might come down and say, you know, I just had enough of what these people are doing to their own planet. I am going to do something about it. You never know. You never know. So maybe my cartoon is just a little preview of who's really going to save us from this world. But beyond that, guys, I want to thank you guys for showing up today. And I will be back tomorrow, uh, probably around uh, pr about the same time, about 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And then Thursday and Friday, guys, I will not be doing a show. There's a little procedure within the family that I got to be at a hospital for. So that's going to be Thursday and Friday. But Saturday... I'm going to be on a guest appearance on the Nona Nona Boss channel. Um, Nona Boss is going to have me on for an hour. It's her, cool. I should have uh, Nona. I should have. I did not put the link up. She had. Uh, I should have put her channel. My bad. My bad. But I'm going to be on her channel on Saturday. That's going to be fun and exciting. And then beyond that, guys, keep looking up because you Thank just you, everyone. never, Love you guys. never, never know. Keep looking up. Keep your eyes and ears open. Because we just don't know. If you're not looking up, you're not looking out. That's exactly right. So I'll see you guys later. <laughs>